my guy. You're our boss. Okay, right. So you've been to my Subicons in Shrewsbury. Yes, you've mate. seen how well he's made. I have. Now we're looking at how well he's used. So it's all about commercial vehicles. So obviously in a strange location, we're down in the pits today, right? And we're going to be looking at transmission and gear oils. Go on. Okay, so what are the different types of transmissions and, and, and what, what kind of properties do the, the, the transmission and gear oils need in order to look after that part of the drive line? <coughs> okay, go on. So we're still under, under here at the moment. So we're under truck at the moment, as you can see. Um, this is actually an automated manual transmission we're looking up at. But there are three types of transmission that could be fitted to a truck. So you've got manual, mm -hmm. standard old manual, automated manual transmission and automatic. Yep. Okay. So those are the kind of three broad kind of categories uh, of transmission that you, you could pick. Yep. Manual transmission tends to be more North American. They like their manual still. I mean, 85% of the trucks out there are proper manual boxes still. Big gear shift levers, you know, they, they love Clutch the pedal. Feel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, the automated manual transmission is very popular now in Europe. So we're probably 95% of the registrations are AMTs. Um, it's almost, if you want a manual, you have to tick that as an option. So these are, these are the most popular type of box by, by far. And then I would say you've got the automatic transmission, which tends to get used more for commercial vehicles using a lot of slower stop-start work, like uh, municipal vehicles, refuse collection. Okay, okay. Fire engines, another yep. good example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so automatic transmissions have their place, but the way, the way we're moving with emissions and fuel efficiency, uh, a lot of the developments uh, recently in gearboxes, which is why AMTs are very popular, um, is, is to, to reduce CO2, you make the, the whole vehicle more fuel efficient. And by taking away driver control when it comes to changing the gears, then the, the, the computer actually does a better job. It yeah, can make, yeah, yeah. You can make a better judgment call on what gear ratio should I be in for this particular workload. And that is really why the AMT has taken over quite substantially in Europe, because it's Although it's a manual box, the guts of it are a manual box. It's, it's, it, the, the gears are changed uh, electro-hydraulically mm -hmm. or, or electronically, depending on what system you're using. So it's all computer controlled. But the beauty about it being computer controlled is the, 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 the computer, the, the system that looks after the gearbox talks to the system that looks after the engine. So they're talking to each other. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yep. so, the, yep. so the driver is, at this point, literally steering it. Is the aim. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's all proof. If I, if I could use that word. That, that, is a, that is an expression that you are free to use. Yeah. Um, so, so Bob, because they're talking to each other, then you can get the optimum efficiency out of that drivetrain from the engine to the gearbox. And don't forget there's an axle on the back as well, yeah. driving yeah, the wheels yeah, yeah. around. Yeah. So, yeah. so all, all, they all work in tandem with each other to give you the optimum efficiency for any of these, in any of these types of vehicles. So because it's automatic, uh, an, um, an automated manual transmission uh, as opposed to an automatic transmission, um, it's based on normal internal work to synchronizers and various other things. But these things are getting smaller, they're getting lighter, because anywhere where you can take weight away from the vehicle, of course, you start to become more fuel efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, But you've still got to protect all those internal components as if it was a standard manual transmission. Of so course, you've yeah. got to look after the gear sets. So they don't wear out. It's any good EP protection, extreme pressure protection. Um, obviously, you've got bearings in there. You've got to make sure the bearings are going to be protected under load. Um, and obviously, you've got the synchronizers as well. So you've got mm -hmm. a certain amount of frictional kind of performance. There's a lot of stuff needed. going on in those. There's a lot of stuff. And, you know, and under load, you know, if, you, if you're pulling, I think it was maximum payloads, 44 ton, I think, in the UK now. Yeah, well, o overall, yeah, yeah, yeah overall, overall, which overall I think, the whole vehicle. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, a payload, trailer. I think a maximum, you see, is like 30 tonne, but it's still yeah, you, some you amount of energy, it, some amount of energy that you need to shift that lot. Yeah, so, yeah. so if yeah. you're crawling up a, you know, up a steep incline, that box is, is, is working, working really, really, yeah, really yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. So 12 gears in there, I think. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's working hard. that's going to be a hot part of the equipment. So, you know, and, and again, um, we, we've talked in previous episodes about oxidation being a killer for lubricants. So if you've got something which has got a heat soak on it for long periods of time, they all start to break down. It causes deposits, form form sludges and various other things, which can impede the action of the gearbox. Okay. So, okay. so so the oil itself has to be formulated to, to combat all that. What sort of gear temperature oil are we looking at? Well, again, you, you don't want to you don't want to go too mad. I think we you know, we talked about in previous episodes about 120 degrees C. Uh, 120 degrees for, yeah. for engine oil, but what for gear oil? Yeah, well, again, you don't want to go beyond that. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you can yeah. still see up around 100 yeah. degrees. And you can still see. You can, see, you can still you get oil coolers as well, and obviously AMTs. Yeah, you can yeah, get them yeah. on there. You know, because you, you want to you want to maintain a, an optimum working temperature 
in order to, to maintain not only the, the component efficiency, mm -hmm. but also yeah. that the oil doesn't sort of like uh, burn itself out too quickly. Okay, okay. Um, awesome. There is a sweet spot. Uh, there is, in yeah. which to keep the oil temperature. Absolutely, okay. and especially with this one, I think this one's fitted with retard as well. It is, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when, when a retard is working to, to help brake the vehicle, there's a lot of energy going into that. So, again, you get a, a massive heat soak on the retard and the fluid that's in there. So, you, you've, you've got to keep all that mm. optimum condition in order to, to, to protect the, the, the complete drive line. So, so AMTs have a, have a difficult life, but as I say, because of computer control, they can be used at the most efficiently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 and everything, of course, associated with fuel savings, uh, although you can make fuel savings here by having a more efficient drive line, because that can translate into spare cash, you know, because fuel, as you know, is a massive overhead for any fleet. The price of it now. Yeah. If you can improve fuel, make fuel savings, through having oh, correct I'll engine oil. Half a percent of fuel saving it's huge, is some it? massive You know, that's sets of tyres and all of sorts year. of things, isn't yeah. it? So, so the move towards fuel efficiency not only provides you the, the, the fleet operator with savings, um, but also it, it improves the fuel efficiency in terms of reducing CO2 output. So, you know, getting your carbon footprint okay. down. Okay, okay. So, so it's, from that point of view, it all, it all works together. And as I say, electronic control is, is the key to this. Um, with automatic transmissions, of course, um, much more complex. Uh, there's a lot more going on inside an automatic transmission compared to a manual transmission. Go on. Yeah. So obviously you've got all the brake bands, the the the, um, the clutch packs. Okay. So you've got all these all these different gear ratios which are possible with planetary gear sets being allowed, you know, being being held or allowed to spin. Again, all computer controlled, of course. But automatic transmissions tend to be a lot heavier because there's a lot more complexity to the guts of an right, automatic okay. transmission. Okay. So. They don't lend themselves to every application because cost is a big factor. You know, it adds to the overall cost of the vehicle. Uh, but where you've got a lot of s slow stop start work, um, you know, I say perfect. We, we talked about London earlier in a different conversation, you know, where you are creeping through traffic, mm -hmm. an automatic transmission is much better suited to that. Um, whereas you don't want to be keep, you know, the, 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 the synchronizers and the clutch mechanisms in AMC working all the time as you're creeping through traffic. It's not the best use of a, of a, of a transmission system. Of course not, no. Well, um, we're in tech. Absolutely. So, so automatic transmissions, um, they've got a place. They're useful, but they do tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, now, just flipping all that on its head, the only other place we tend to see manual transmission still tend to be in the sort of light trucks. So where you've got the small truck where you can just jump in, and if you've got higher drivers, they don't necessarily need to be trained on an AMT or an auto box. They can literally jump in because I'm driving the car. So, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So you've you've got that, that kind of that end of the market still where, uh, in in the UK and Europe, you still get sort of manual transmissions, but the the actual lubrication requirements of those manual transmissions are similar to an AMT anyway. But you've got a driver making the decision rather than um, a management system okay. making the decision yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we're still seeing those. Although IMT seem to be kind of creeping into that market more and more, as I say, when you're looking at fuel efficiency and various other savings, we can see the manual transmission kind of slipping away a little bit. Okay. Okay. So that's a transmission, but then on the other end of that of course you've got to get the wheels moving. So you'll have a you'll have an axle of some description, which is taking the, the full load, distributing it to the wheels, making the whole vehicle turn. So again you, you've got to protect the gear mechanism in there, the differential that's in there, um, any other components, there may be reduction hubs, various other things, but hold that gear mechanism under load. Again, you know, the gearbox will be under load, the, 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 the axle will be under load. You've got to protect it from, from, from heat, I say any heat that's generated so it doesn't break down and form deposits. Um, that's important. So the, the actual uh, integrity of the whole unit depends on the lubricant again being robust enough to not only carry, uh, to put up with the heat, but, but carry the load as well. Again, if you've got um, you know, a heavily loaded trailer on the back of this with a lot of pressure pushing down and you've got you know, reasonable forward speed as well, that, that's a lot going on there for the bearings, if nothing mm -hmm. else. And we've certainly seen over the years as we've moved to, to bigger payloads that the, uh, the viscosity, the thickness of these axle oils has gone up. So, I mean, Scania, for example, are using 75W140s primarily in the, in the, in the, in the big units. Because the heavier that oil is, then the more, more protection, protection it offers yeah, the bearing. Yeah, so yeah. as the payloads have gone up, we've seen viscosity start. Well, there's a frictional to cost to pay for having Absolutely. heavier grade oil. There is that, yeah. So a lot of these tend to be um, multi grades, like 75Ws, which will get you down to minus 40 degrees centigrade cold start. 
That's where most of your fuel efficiency can be lost. Is thick, gloopy gear or trying to be pushed around or thrown around a gearbox or, or, a, or an axle, axle casing. So they tend to be coupled with low viscosity um, um, performance parameters as well. So as I say, 75W140 gives you minus 40 cold start fluidity, but it's a 140 grade when the, when, when the pressure's on basically, so it's protecting those bearings from, yeah, from load. Yeah, so, yeah, that makes sense. That's right. So there's a lot of evolution taking place with, um, with axle oils as well, as, as we've seen the increase in payloads. So between them, you know, the, the, the transmission system is chosen to give you the, the, the best fuel efficiency, the best um, handling, if you like, coupled with the, the axle system as well to give you the, the, the load carrying you need for when the, when the, the pressure is on. And, and together, you know, they, they, they produce an, an improved, um, improved system of transport which re reduces um, fuel overheads, reduces CO2, makes that vehicle much better environmentally. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are all working in tandem with each other now. So there's a lot going on inside one of these, as you can imagine. <laughs> and it relies on the lubricant, again, like most mechanical systems, to be a critical part of how the whole thing works. So you know, there's no shortcuts to formulating a good, good driveline lubricant. You've got to get it right. So there you go. There's a lot going on, mate. There's a lot in there, yeah. You've some knowledge in your head. <laughs> hey? You've got it all covered, mate. Well, I'm, I'm impressed. Thank you very much for your time. Absolute pleasure, got Absolute pleasure. So if you'd like to see any more content like this or any more videos with Guy, then visit our Modest Lubricants website or visit our YouTube channel.